So now I put in all the bolts, just loosely finger tight. There's lots of gap between them. The gasket's still there, the, the case isn't bottomed yet. And I'm just gonna lightly tap it into place. With a rubber mallet until it's bottomed and then I'm going to hand tighten all of these bolts till they're on the bottom just nice and evenly and what I'm trying to do ultimately is get an even pressure all the way around this big gasket so I don't develop any leaks in the future and that'll only take me a minute then we're going to use the torque wrench on it so I've, I've set my torque wrench initially at 7.5 foot-pounds. I've done this one, this one, and I'm going to come back to the other side and I'm going to do this in a star pattern as much as possible. And um, I want to bring this case down nice and even, evenly so that we don't develop any leaks. If you notice, I've taken my extension off of my torque wrench um, because it changes the torque value at the end of the wrench. So if you don't have a torque wrench, um, don't worry, you can buy one. <laughs> because everybody that works on their motorcycle should own one. And there's no guessing, there's, um, there's no torque uh, value that comes from a, uh, uh, from a pneumatic tool or an electric tool that's accurate. So the only way to do it is to buy a torque wrench and a good one too. And on the plus side, it'll probably last you your whole life. And you can even send them in for calibration once in a while. I do that every five years or so because I don't um, use it enough to warrant doing it every year like some people do. Um, but I know there are places like NASA where they actually have calibration tools on site and they get calibrated every week. So it's a good thing to have if you want to um, keep your bike running properly and not strip out these uh, aluminum parts on the side. Now I'm on the other side of the engine uh, reassembling. I've put the keyway in and it's nice and even all the way across and I'm going to put the flywheel back on. There's the magnet on the flywheel. I have positioned the crankshaft so that the magnet is pointing away from the coil. It's just a little bit easier to line it up when you're fighting that coil. You've got a lot of um, um, magnetic pull going on and it pulls the flywheel out of your hand. So. Just kind of point it anywhere away from here and you're okay. So I'm going to sit this over the top of here very carefully and nicely. And um, just get it to move all the way down into position. And there we are. And it's all in place. Okay, so I've sat the fan back on top. And it fits in the little uh, guide pin sit in the holes. And then there's a guide pin on the back of the, uh, the pulley. Put the nut inside and then tighten it down. I don't have any torque values for this engine, but these tend to be pretty tight anyway. So I'm gonna give that a good amount of torque when I put it on by hand. Okay, so I've put a good amount of torque on here. Uh, you can kind of feel it stop when it gets to the end. You don't have to go crazy with it. And now I'm going to tuck in the uh, primary wire off the coil that, um, and it goes through kind of like a telephone uh, wire goes behind a telephone. You just kind of bend it between these things and it makes like a little wire channel and the wire sits back here for connection afterwards. And we're doing this in preparation for putting the, uh, the side cover on and the fan shroud and the gas tank. And then we'll start working on the assemblies for the carburetor. Okay, so I'm putting the shroud back on, loosely putting in all the bolts at the same time so that it can bend into place. Uh, of particular note on here, um, this little wire with the ring end of it has to be between the um, engine and the shroud, and that's your ground wire. This is your primary ground uh, for the shutoff, and if this isn't connected, then you won't be able to turn off the engine. I was debating whether to keep the original switch or just use the doodlebug handlebar switch, but I thought given the nature of this sort of engine and rigging it together with all different sorts of throttle parts and what have you, I would leave the secondary shutoff on here. And all this is is a ground. It essentially takes the energy from this wire 
and diverts it from the spark plug directly to the engine and it prevents the spark plug from sparking when you do that. So when you turn this to the um, off position, it actually makes a circuit, makes a circuit to this wire directly back to here to the ground. So it shorts out the spark plug. When you turn it to on, you actually open the circuit and then the spark plug is free to spark. So the original wires that came with this for the um, um, for for the, the low oil sensor, I'm going to modify uh, one of these connections to fit into the original Doodlebug wiring harness, and the other connection is going to go back into the original um, uh, wire from the coil. And then I have to take the other side of the Doodlebug uh, wire and join it into here. So I'll use a wire tap and join it, tap it right into this wire. But then, if the Doodlebug handlebar um, uh, kill switch should ever malfunction, then you can always reach down and just turn this off. Otherwise, you'll just leave this in the on position forever and just use the one on the handlebars and never know it's there. So that's it for the wiring um, explanation. I'll get more into the uh, details of doing it when I actually do it. Okay, I'm going to show you now one of the trickier parts, and that is uh, converting the throttle. As you remember before, we had the, um, the arm from the governor poking out over here. And on that arm uh, was a little piece of rod. Um, let me grab it here. This stuff right here. You remember that. And this side, this side that you see here went into the governor arm. And the other side went into the, into the little uh, uh, rotating part of the carburetor. And it just kind of sat in there and is in like a little groove. So what I did was I took that arm and I brought it over, and if you look at the top of your throttle arm, there's two holes in here, one there and one here. I used the hole in the front. I just put a 90 degree angle at the bottom of it. Let me see if I can focus on it properly. There we go. I put a 90 degree angle at the bottom, and it came up through the top, and I put a little bend on it just so it wouldn't back down through the hole. And you can watch the mechanism work now. Um, here she goes. See? It just kind of pushes the rotating part of the carburetor back and forth. So a picture is worth a thousand words. So I put it together rather than walking you through this step by step. Now you're looking at this part here and saying, where'd you get that? Well, that's from uh, Hot Rod Mini Bikes online, hotrodminibikes.com. And um, that's their throttle kit. It actually isn't for this setup. Their setup uses the governor and this is just a quick way to, to hook it up. I'm using it in my own way because I don't want anything to do with the governor or like in some videos you see the old governor rod they use here and it makes like a leakage point in the engine so I didn't want that either. Um, so as this, I, you, as this rod goes back and forth it actually it's the throttle. Um, but on this end of it over here, so, okay so the the cable's gonna come through here, and then there's this little cable nut that comes in the kit, and that slips up through here, up through this hole, and your cable ties off right there, like so. And uh, I haven't got to that part yet, I'm gonna put that on when I install the bike on the, and install the throttle, I'm sorry, the engine on the motorcycle. <laughs> you have to loosen this nut up here because it's cinched down so tightly that it won't allow this to move freely. So you just loosen it up. There's a, uh, a spring washer underneath there that keeps it in place, and this is a nylock bolt, so or nut and bolt, so it'll, it'll stay in place even if you loosen it a bit. No problem. <clears throat> and also, in, this is another part of the kit here, this little 90 degree angle and the spring, the reinforced spring for the, for the throttle return. And I use the other spring just as a, as a precaution they're showing it in their kit as being hooked on here, but it interferes with this spring. So I just put it into this hole and it seems to work better. It gives more of a, a direct angle with the rotation. You can see it operating properly. So, And this jumps up a little bit, which I kind of like because I know that when it does that, it's at full stop on the bottom. And I left a little bit of length in the rod so that it won't jam against it. You know what I mean? So, so it won't jam against the uh, against this part down here. 
once once it gets to the end. So anyway, that's how uh, that's how I did my throttle linkage setup. It's actually pretty simple, and I'll just focus on it here so you can see how it works. See where the springs are. Because this was kind of complicated. Nobody really gives you any directions anywhere for it, so I just kind of had to improvise this. So you're welcome to copy it all you want. I'm not responsible for it <laughs> or anything else. So if you do it, it's uh, of your own volition and don't go looking at me. But this is what I did for my bike. So there it is. So bring the cable into here and it'll attach over here with this little, this little doohickey. So that's the throttle assembly minus any governor or governor rods um, or anything like that. This is how people have it before and then they kind of fasten something onto the end of it so it does this uh, lengthwise but then you have this hole in the engine and it's excess weight and the material and problems I think that you don't need so and all these holes on here are already here so look at your own Harbor Freight Greyhound engine or Honda clone and you'll see uh, you'll see the exact same setup. Alright that's it for throttle.